What are you doing? Where's your shoes gone? <laughs> Did you get me any hot wings? Maybe. <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> get your pistol far. You got it, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Cinema Shogun here? And let me start this video by wishing all of the mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day. Not a birthing person's day, a Mother's Day. I wish all of you all a very happy Mother's Day. I have a lot of you all that reach out to me all the time telling me that I remind you of your kids or your grandkids. I found a couple of new aunties and motherly-like figures through my subscribers. And I love all of you all. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Today... We're going to talk a little bit about trauma because trauma is an interesting subject to talk about. I believe that everyone suffers from some sort of trauma in their life. We have all had traumatic experiences, right? Some worse than others. You know, some of us can move on and live our lives. Others dwell on that trauma for the remainder of their days. But one thing that I've learned about trauma is usually people don't really like to talk about the trauma that they've been through. More often than not, people bury it down inside of them. And when they do open up about their trauma, when they do talk about their trauma, usually it's in an intimate setting. And hearing about other people's trauma can be really powerful. It could be really moving, really sad, really depressing. But it's usually not something that people just want to stand on top of a mountain and yell to the world. So I always find it sort of disgusting. I'll just call I'll just say it how it is. I always find it sort of disgusting when people try to monetize their trauma. When people create a whole persona around the trauma that they've been through. I don't know how things are where you live in your country, but here in America, we got famous celebrities that have done nothing at all other than be maybe a victim of something. They went through some sort of trauma and they rode that trauma all the way to celebrity status. Literally. There are people out here that are viewed as celebrities. They haven't made any music. They haven't made any art. They haven't appeared in any movies. They've done nothing but went through some sort of trauma that they monetized and rode all the way to the top. It seems like one of the fastest ways to get a meal ticket in America these days. To just, woe is me, I'm a victim of this, trauma this, trauma that. And then you grift off of it. You know, until you're a very successful person. Successful for what? Because you went through a traumatic experience. Much like the majority of people do who don't wear it out in the open like a freaking fur coat that they brag about all the time. So when it comes to Britney Spears, naturally, I've been kind of disgusted by the way this trauma that she so-called went through has been handled. Britney has been out of the conservatorship for over a year. Britney has a platform. She's famous. She has a platform on Instagram, over 40 million followers. She has a platform where she could speak about her trauma to millions of people if that's what she wanted to do. And to make no mistake about it, she has... It's just the traumatic experiences that she's talked about don't seem that traumatic to everyday people. You know, from the limousine not being there outside of her private jet when she arrives back in America from London. You know, the backup dancers looking better than her and dancing better than her that she would get upset about. These are the traumas that we have heard from Britney over the past year. But we keep getting this promise, a promise that's, 
I don't even necessarily want to say it's from Britney directly, but it's like this promise that, oh, when Britney's book releases, you will know and understand everything about her trauma. Just wait until Britney Spears' book comes out. Then, and only then, will she reveal the real trauma that she's been through. And in many ways, it's like we're getting these preview snippets. Hey, you want to hear the story about Britney's trauma? Here's a little bit about Britney's trauma on Instagram, but you got to buy the book to find out the rest. And it's like they are advertising a product around Britney's trauma, and they're monetizing Britney's trauma to the fullest extent. And my thing is like, oh, if your conservatorship was this bad and you felt this desperate to tell the outside world what was happening to you, then why do we have to wait for your book to come out? Why do we have to spend $40 on a book of rambling nonsense to find out what actually happened to you? You have a platform that for free, you could tell the world what happened, but no. But no, we got to wait for this book that keeps getting delayed every six months. Oh, we ran out of paper. There's a shortage of trees. Oh, there's lawsuits. Brittany may have pissed us. And it's just like they're dragging you along. But I don't think people really sit down and realize what's happening here. Not only is Britney's trauma being monetized, it, it's like they're using it as bait to bait you in. Oh boy, guess what? You're going to really want to read this book so you could finally hear about Britney's trauma. And that just puts a bad taste in my mouth. That makes me feel like things are not genuine. If you genuinely want to get something off your chest, you do it. You don't sign a book deal and then wait a year and a half for trees to grow, I guess, for you to publish a book where you tell people about your trauma. You want to hear about my trauma? Well, it'll be $39.99 at Barnes & Noble's. You know what I mean? So from day one, when she got out of this conservatorship, all, already off the bat, I was like, nope, 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 nope. I know you could fool everyone else, but you ain't going to fool me. You're monetizing this trauma that she went through. And the next step of Britney's career, it's not going to be music. It's not going to be the shitty dance move performances that she does. No, the next step in her career is to monetize the trauma. How can we milk this conservatorship for everything that we can? And now, guess what's happening? The creator of freaking American Horror Story. Ryan Murphy, I think that's his name, right? He wants to make a TV show about the trauma that Britney went through during her conservatorship. So once again, we're monetizing the trauma. This guy wants to make a whole entire TV show about Britney's conservatorship. We haven't really heard from Britney much. And... <clears throat> Let me pause right there. We've heard a lot from Britney. It's just that she hasn't said much. Yeah, we've had thousands of posts, long, rambling paragraphs of complete nothingness. But what of substance have we really gotten, folks? We've gotten the repeated, I couldn't drink coffee and I couldn't do the... What have we really gotten of substance, folks? Nothing. We're just promised that, oh, the deep, dark secrets will be revealed when the book comes out. And then the book's going to come out. It's going to be complete nonsense. And then they're going to be, oh, well, you got to wait for the TV show. American Horror Story creator wants to make a TV show about Britney's conservatorship. You want to know what he should do? He should turn the next season of American Horror Story into just showing clips from Britney's Instagram account. I kid you not, Britney's Instagram account... It's not as bad right now, but a few months ago, it was the scariest thing I have ever seen in my freaking life. And like I told you all, I pinned out, not a script, but an outline for a horror movie that I would like to make one day, loosely based, not around Britney, but around Britney's Instagram profile. It is a horror show, or it was, <clears throat> and... It probably will be again soon. Once it's time to start promoting that book, 
Best believe Britney's going to get to twirling. You see, everyone was wondering, why didn't Britney promote her Hold Me Closer song with Elton John? Well, turns out she was promoting it the whole time. She was promoting it with her asinine, weird, mentally ill antics on Instagram. Because guess what? Britney acting crazy and mentally ill is making people more interested in Britney than her music. Most people have left that music in the past, right where Britney should have left all of her horrible outfits. But let's go ahead and dive into a piece of this article about Ryan Murphy wanting to basically capitalize off of Britney's conservatorship. Ryan is openly fascinated by the Britney saga. And of course, he is one of the few filmmakers in Hollywood, maybe the only one really, with a professional relationship with Britney. He knows her. He knows her world. And he knows why the story of her conservatorship resonated with so many people. But Ryan hates being accused of exploiting victims and tragedies in his shows. So this becomes an incredibly delicate matter and not something he would even consider pushing without Britney's full cosign. The hilarious part about all of this to me is that these Yas Queen free Britney weirdos, they constantly say, oh, this person was after Britney's money. Britney's father was after her money. This person was after Britney's money. And I'm not saying that that's not necessary. I'm not saying that that's false. But if you could accuse all of these other people of being after Britney's money, how can you not see how Hollywood is exploiting this situation? How can you not see that people like Britney's lawyer is after Britney's money? Matthew Rosengart? Dudes made nearly six million dollars off of Britney Spears in the last 17 months since the conservatorship has ended. Nearly $6 million. Now the problem is, a lot of these fans, they run around, they're brain dead. They don't understand money. These people think that Britney's worth billions upon billions of dollars. That's not even remotely close to being true. Britney's estimated net worth when getting out of the conservatorship was $60 million. $60 million. Sources say that that has dropped significantly since then. We have to remember she bought a multi-million dollar house that she is now trying to sell like a month or two later after buying it. Britney has made some very irrational decisions. So I would imagine it's significantly less than $60 million. But let's just say, for the sake of this video, Britney is worth $60 million. You have to consider the fact that Britney's lawyer just made nearly $6 million off of Britney in roughly about a year and some change, right? Think about that. That's Britney's lawyer taking 10%. I'm not the greatest at math. But if you made around $6 million and Britney's only worth around $60 million, dude took like 10% of Britney's net worth in just about a year. Imagine if Britney keeps this guy on for another few years. Now he claims he's going to work for free from now on. But just think about that. 10% of this woman's net worth is gone. And for what? Nothing has happened. Not a single soul is in jail. Not a single dollar has been found that supposedly belongs to Britney. Nothing. Six million dollars. Ten percent of Britney's net worth. And considering the fact that Britney was worth 60 million at the end of the conservatorship, and considering the fact that she goes on these vacations all the time, supposedly, considering the fact that she bought a multi-million dollar home, that's over 10% of Britney's net worth. I would say dude probably took roughly around 12 to 13% of Britney's entire net worth in just about a year. So all that's happened here, like I've been trying to stress the whole time, is the family got moved out of the way so other people could leech off of Britney. And now that's what's going to happen here. We're going to have Hollywood 
the very animal, the beast that created the animal that, you know, Britney is today, Hollywood is going to capitalize off of this every step of the way. We're going to have the books. We're going to have the documentaries. We're going to have the TV shows, the American Horror Story dramatized conservatorship special. All the while, Britney's so-called trauma looks nothing to... Looks like nothing more than a meal ticket for everyone. A meal ticket for Brittany, a meal ticket for Ryan Murphy, a meal ticket for Matthew Rosengard, a meal ticket for everyone involved. Meanwhile, her desperate diehard fans can't seem to see the writing on the wall. It's right there. It's blatantly obvious. And I believe over the coming months, a lot of things will become more obvious to the naysayers, the people who maybe don't follow this story as closely as I do and as closely as a lot of you all do. But at the end of the day, the moral of the story is, how can I feel bad for Britney and what she's supposedly been through if Britney has just turned this into a new career, a new way to make money? That's what it seems like to me. And when I say Britney... It's it's not just her, it's the people around her, but I'm sure she reeks the benefits from it as well. So how seriously do you want me to take this trauma when she doesn't take the trauma seriously enough to get help or to express herself in any other means other than ways to make money? It's all turned into one big get money scheme. Let's get money off of Britney, make money off of Britney's trauma. And Britney's making money off of her own trauma. And all the while, the fans are just being led on. Led on for no reason other than to milk them dry of their hard-earned money. But anyways, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. And I'll talk to you all in the next video.